Hello, good evening, welcome to uh, this week's edition of Vapor Scene here on VaporTrails.tv. Now, I've got the usual kind of stuff coming up tonight. Uh, we've got a little update on the uh, Evic Supreme, well, the software, because I've been mucking about with it. Um, got some uh, interesting news stories from the States. Yeah, one from yesterday, a couple from last week. Uh, and uh, some uh, other news stories from the BBC and the Daily Fail, I mean Mail. Uh, and uh, all sorts of other stuff and uh, that will be coming up after the titles uh, which are coming up now. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e liquid Yes, indeed, it is Tuesday, it's nine o'clock, and you're watching Vapor Scene here on vapor12s.tv. And uh, I hope you're all well. I saw a few in chat um, before we went live live, just for the uh, little pre-show bit. Little soups on at the beginning, before we go live to check the uh, sound levels, etc. Uh, and uh, yes, I've got uh, a few stories for you coming up shortly. Some VT, yeah, all good stuff. Uh, and I promised you last week, I said, uh, because I came on with this shot, the big shot, yes. Uh, and um, <laughs> someone said I must have a huge house. And uh, I said that I, uh, I might well put a shot in um, to see, you can see what it's like without all this. So if I do that, there you go, that is what you see. If it wasn't for the uh, trickery. So if I do that again, yes, there we go. Um, the, uh, the the PC says, oh, ignore the green and put this lovely image behind me. Yeah, so uh, that is what I get. So it's all green behind me. Uh, and uh, if you were looking from my point of view and I was looking right ahead, you'd see this. And this is what we are faced with uh, when we use uh, the software. And you can see there are all the shots lined up for the show in chronological order. Yeah, so... Uh, Yes, the magic. That's the magic, you see. You click on there uh, and uh, there's all the shots. Anyway, I digress. I just said I'd show you that last week, so uh, I've shown you it now. And maybe next week I'll have a live video feed and you can see exactly everything, all the monitors and stuff going on. Uh, and it's not as complicated as Dave Kitson and uh, Dave Dawn's setup either. Um, their setup is uh, very complicated, even more cameras and trickery going on. And of course, no green screen anymore or blue screen that Dave used to use because they're using other stuff. But I digress. Anyway, let us crack on with the first news story. And this is from uh, the BBC today. Yes, e-cigarettes help smokers to quit by Nick Triggle, health correspondent. And it says there, smokers who use e-cigarettes to quit are more likely to succeed than those who use willpower alone all by nicotine replacement therapies such as patches or gum, a study suggests. And it goes on. The survey of nearly 6,000 smokers found a fifth had quit with the aid of e-cigarettes. That was 60% higher than those who did not use the devices, the study said. The University College London team said they were cautiously positive about the role e-cigarettes could play. And e-cigarette use has shot up in recent years, as we know. Action on smoking and health estimate that there are two million people using them, triple the number from two years ago, and half of current ex or ex-smokers have not tried them compared to 8% in 2010. 
Users experience a sensation of smoking by inhaling a vapour which contains a concentration of nicotine, but they remain controversial. The Welsh Government wants to restrict them, their use in public places because of fears they normalise smoking. Yeah. And it goes on for a little bit more. Uh, in fact, that much more. Um, but uh, head over to the BBC website and uh, look under the health um, tag and you'll find that story there. But another story in the Daily Mail um, is a little bit different and it says this. Are e-cigarette smokers at risk from superbugs? Vapour helps deadly bacteria to thrive, say scientists. So e-cigarettes have been hailed as a new, healthier alternative to smoking. However, new study shows users are more at risk from superbugs. Vapour puts bacteria on the defensive, making them harder to kill. Inhaling also diminishes body's ability to fight off any infection. Now, that one goes on as well. Um, for oh another couple of pages like that uh, and then there's also a lovely slide there of some MRSA um, again if you want to go and have a look at that one go to the Daily Mail online website and have a look um, it's basically saying that uh, MRSA lasts longer in vapor um, but conventional cigarettes are actually much worse um, for keeping the MR MRSA bug um, alive. Whether or not that's true or not, I don't know. Um, there must be some scientific basis behind it. I mean, it's in the Daily Mail, isn't it? What can I say? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I mean, if you think about it, the vapour, it's moist. Um, is that somewhere that uh, bugs could live, but it dissipates so quickly? There's also the coating on e-cigarettes, they're saying, is uh, could be a breeding ground for MRSA as well. Well, not if it's polished brass or stainless steel, I don't think. But if it's a rubberized one and you're not particularly clean with your hands, I don't know. It's the same could be said for your remote control or your mobile phone or your laptop keyboard. In fact, I think Keyboards and telephones in workplaces are some of the dirtiest things around, sometimes even more bacteria than toilet seats. Um, I seem to remember on an episode of Mythbusters some time ago. Yeah, um, so take that one as you will, with a pinch of salt or with a spray of Dettol. Uh, other antibacterial agents are, of course, available. Um, and uh, another one from the Daily Mail, which is not e-cig related but it is ciggy related and it was this the smart lighter that shames you into quitting smoking 46 pound gadget tracks how many cigarettes you light up each day and the quick bit was created by a pair of boston based designers it resembles a zippo and tracks the number of cigarettes an owner smokes each time it's used it's an interesting little bit of kit this and i've got the bit of video um, that they are using for crowdfunding. Um, have a little look. It's, it's an interesting little bit of kit, but have a little look. These are activity trackers. They help you become healthier, move more, lose weight, sleep better, you get it. This is also a tracker, and it helps you become healthier too, except it's a lighter. So what happens when you take the same principles that help you become more active and use them to help you quit smoking? You get the Quipit, the world's first smart lighter. It lights your cigarettes using a heat coil and tracks every time you smoke. It shows you how much you've smoked, how long it's been since your last one, and helps you stay on course to achieve your goals. Learning your smoking habits is simple. With the Quipit app, you can take a closer look at your trends and set custom goals to quit. About a year ago, my friend asked me how many cigarettes I smoked that day, and I realized I really wasn't sure. Sometimes you light up without even thinking about it. The Quipit tracks when you smoke, so you can be mindful and start to cut out cigarettes one by one. If you can measure it, you can manage it. Visualize your progress and share it with the built-in community. We're big into the power of customization, so you can even limit when or how often the lighter works. The Quipit can be used alone, 
but it also plays nicely with others. We have a team of industrial designers that have created something wonderful, so you can be proud of quitting. We also wanted it to last, so we've been living in China for the last four months, working directly with factories and suppliers to make sure we produce something quality, and that will stick by your side, no matter how long it takes. With your support, we can go through large-scale manufacturing and finalize the app. We can't wait to get the equipment into your hands and see how you'll use it. Please back us, help spread the word, and join our journey. Thank you. Yeah, that was the quick bit. <laughs> and I was just looking at chat uh, as, the, as that was playing out. Um, it's an awful lot of money for a lighter, isn't it? What interested me, though, about the, the actual device itself, it looks really smart, I have to say. And, you know, they've spent four months living in China. Wow. Um, so they've certainly put some investment into it. The actual bit of kit itself looks really good. But the interesting bit for me was the Bluetooth connectivity between that quick bit lighter and the app on Android and iOS. Um, when is it going to be we're going to get the same kind of functionality, say with the Evic Supreme, or another eSig with Bluetooth capability? So instead of having to plug it in to get your stats and change things, you can do it on the fly on an iPhone or uh, an Android app. Now that would be the interesting thing. Um, but going back to that, um, the, uh, the cigarettes are lit with a heated coil and not a flame. Um, and it uses Bluetooth and is compatible with an iPhone 4S, 5, 5S and Android 4.3 and above. Yeah, interesting, um, interesting concept. Whether or not people in the UK are going to spend, I think it was, uh, let's see, go to this one. Yeah, they expected to retail for $149 or £88. I don't know many smokers that are going to pay £88 for a lighter. Really? Uh, even if it does, even if you can tell it not to light your next cigarette for three hours, you're just going to go and buy a box of matches or bum a light, aren't you? Or get the gas cooker. <laughs> or use a soldering iron or anything to light your cigarette. So um, functionality-wise, I think it looks really smart. Will it work in practice? Who knows, but it's a lot of money to spend on a lighter. Um, <laughs> very boring, just said in chat. I smoked loads of extra fags today, mate. Someone nicked my lighter, or hacked my lighter. I'm sorry, someone hacked my lighter. Yes, they do say in the article that um, if you light a friend's cigarette for them, it doesn't count. How that happens, because obviously you flick it open, you press the button, it's going to take that as a light, isn't it? So, uh, you know, you'd be a lot of people asking for twos, wouldn't you? Or they'll just take your end <laughs> and use that to light. Anyway, I digress. Uh, it was an in interesting little bit of kit, I must say. Um, but uh, the technology is there. Let's see it into E6. Yeah. Now then, let's move on. And I've got a couple of uh, news stories from across the pond. Uh, and then uh, we're going to go to the ads after that. Uh, and then I've got some more. So um, have a little look at this. The first one is from uh, News 9. For smokers, they're becoming the latest fad. If you don't own one, chances are you know someone who does. We're talking about electronic cigarettes. Yeah, with dozens of brands showing up on store shelves, it's hard not to hear the hype. But are they really safe to use? News 9's Adam Del Rosso has been talking with doctors and smokers here in the Valley and joins us with a special assignment. Young and old, we saw all ages, of course, over the age of 18, walk into the smoke shop where we were. Instead of coming to get their pack or curtain of smokes, they're trying the latest trend, electronic cigarettes. At first, it may look like a normal cigarette, but look again. There's no flame, no smoke, just vapor. I have tried them. I really like them, yeah. <laughs> no, they're not too bad. Yeah, they're good. According to the Tobacco Vapor Electronic Cigarette Association, sales of electronic cigarettes have soared from 50,000 to 3.5 million in just 
three years. They're still extremely popular. <laughs> people keep coming in and getting them. Yeah, especially recently. Like, the more people hear about them, the more they just want to try them. Some people I spoke to say they aren't a huge fan of the new technology, but those who are say it has really helped them cut back on regular cigarettes. Like a definite cut back. Really? Yeah. Already? Yeah. So what did you use to smoke a day and how much? About three packs a day to like one cigarette a day. Wow. So it definitely helps. One of the reasons why people tell me they love electronic cigarettes so much is because of all the different flavors. You've got root beer, raspberry, vanilla, with each of the bottles lasting the equivalent of a carton of cigarettes. But are they really a safe alternative? We went to Wheeling Hospital to get some answers. Do we know exactly what could be in these cartridges or what people could be inhaling? Uh, well, nicotine is, you know, been studied for a while. I think the liquid nicotine and having lay people put them in the uh, uh, cigarettes, the e-cigs themselves, and with kids around, I think that's the unknown factor. Dr. Angelo George's chief medical officer tells me he has quite a few patients who are using e-cigs to try and quit altogether, while he recommends using other, more traditional step-down approaches like nicotine patches or inhalers. It's hard for me as a physician to tell them to stop doing it till we have more research. I think that's a plus that they're able to get off cigarettes. And when it comes to ads and commercials, Dr. Georges says he is concerned about young kids thinking that smoking is cool, whether it's using e-cigs or not. There's no reason to promote this as stylish. There shouldn't be any fruity flavors or colorful pens or whatever they're using. It should be only indicated for those lifelong smokers that need to get off. As it stands right now, e-cigs are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, which users tell me is a little concerning. Dr. Georges expects that will likely change in the next year or so if they want to move forward successfully here in the States. With this News 9 special assignment, Adam Del Rosso. It's the latest craze and a new way for smokers to fight their craving, electronic cigarettes. But a new study is suggesting e-cigarettes are more harmful than originally thought. News 5's Kelly Baumgarten has more. Many smokers say electronic cigarettes have helped them to kick the habit. I mean, if I can quit, anybody can quit. Smokers who used electronic cigarettes were one-third less likely to quit smoking than those who didn't. That's according to a new comprehensive study by San Francisco Center for Tobacco Control Research and Education. The study also found that many smokers ended up using both electronic and traditional cigarettes. Electronic cigarettes do increase dual use. Jacob Martikainen owns e Titan Vapor Lounge in Grand Island, and he disagrees. I think a lot of our customers could attest to that when they come in. We have a wall. Uh, full of signatures of people that can attest that say, hey, this really worked for us. So what exactly isn't a conventional cigarette? Tar, formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, just to name a few. And what about the electronic cigarette? Safer, right? Not exactly. The study also found that the new technology contains a number of toxic chemicals. History is repeating itself. We've already went through this with the tobacco industry with cigarettes. Now we're just going through it again with electronic cigarettes. If we rewind back to 50 years ago, doctors were lighting up in hospitals, unaware of tobacco's harmful effects. So what else is in e-cigarettes that we don't know about? The FDA is working on a regulation that would require companies to disclose a list of their ingredients for the first time. Reporting in Grand Island, Kelly Baumgarten, News 5. The Board of Health of the South Heartland District Health Department passed a resolution last week recommending policy change to prohibit the use of electronic cigarettes in public places. The Health Department is encouraging city and county governments to add electronic cigarettes to their policies that already prohibit tobacco use. Yes, I think the um, American TV companies could well do with watching some of our stuff, really. Um, watching the UK stuff uh, and uh, getting the right information, <laughs> don't you? Um, I remember going back to the doctors thing about doctors smoking hospitals. I remember seeing my village GP when I lived uh, up in the Yorkshire Dales, um, and he sat there with a fag and ashtray in the consulting room. Uh, and you no, know, they did in those days. Um, but then, of course, everything changed. But in all these news stories, all we're seeing is it's the children, the children, it's the grade school kids, and there's one after the break as well, um, where they actually talk to some high school kids. Um, are they going to use e-cigs or are they going to use conventional cigs? Let's face it, 
If they're going to use e-cigs, it's going to be far better for them. All they're going to do by stopping them um, using them, or trying to stop them using them, is force them to go and use conventional tobacco. Uh, and we all know that if you use an e-cig and it tastes nice, you're not going to then going to want to go and spend eight pounds on a packet of conventional cigarettes, um, are you? Or are you? Really? You think? No. No, I don't think so. Right then, let's have the ads. And uh, when we come back, we've got um, got some some better stuff for America. Um, and I've been sitting on this bit of VT for a couple of weeks, and I keep saying I'm going to play it. And this week I'm going to play it. It's Greg Gutfeld talking sense. And that will be coming up after these messages. See you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Now it's back to Vaporscene on Vaportrails TV. Vaporscene is proudly sponsored by Health e -Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. And we are indeed back in the green room, or the green studio. <laughs> yeah, welcome back. Just looking through uh, chat there as uh, as the ads were playing through. Uh, no, I can't do uh, I can't do YouTube um, because I'm going out on 4G. Um, so the SVP stream is the most stable for me on 4G, um, and you get a 720p picture. Uh, if I was going out on broadband, you'd get a, <laughs> a 380. Um, so, uh, yeah, not good. So uh, that's why I go out on 4G these days, courtesy of uh, my uh, network provider. Well, I pay for it, but, yeah, I use my phone as a modem. It's good stuff, very good stuff. Anyway, let's move on. Um, because I saw this um, earlier on on Facebook. Uh, there we go. And it was put up by uh, Julian from the VapeFest committee. Um, sponsors Emporium Vapor are keen to get as many Scottish vapors to VapeFest as they can. And they're offering a return trip aboard their swanky vape friendly coach for as little as £30. And if you go to the uh, VapeFest website, which is uh, www.ukvapefest.com, and have a look at the taking the high road and the low road story, there's a little bit more about it there uh, and there's also a thread on UK Vapors um, which is very good 
uh, and I sent Employee and Vapors a little message earlier on, and I might get them on the show next week to have a little chat about that and see how things are going and if there's any space on the bus. Um, so um, that's uh, going to be rather good. It's going to leave uh, on Friday, I believe, get down to the site, uh, and then leave on the Sunday back to Bonnie, Scotland. Yeah, so uh, I thought it was a rather good idea, uh, and a lot cheaper than uh, getting down there under your own steam, so to speak. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, getting down there on the train or whatever. So, uh, yeah, not a bad idea at all. And uh, very boring said he will be on that coach. Yes, and I did see your... Uh, your message on the thread. <laughs> so uh, it'll be good. And hopefully I shall be in attendance myself uh, on the day. Uh, as will uh, Dazza, who's, uh, is he in chat tonight? Mm, don't think he's in chat tonight. Um, but uh, yeah, Dazza from uh, where I work is also going to be there. Um, so there you go. That was the, uh, the Vape Fest bus from Emporium Vapors. Um, now then, Let's go to my uh, next little story, and this is um, from Pennsylvania, I believe. Yes, have a little look. Well, electronic cigarettes were originally created as a device to help smokers kick the habit. But now the still unregulated product is booming in popularity with high school students right here in Erie. Dee Dee Sun has more. The e-cigs, they're, they're very popular amongst the students. Everyone's starting to get them. It's like a big hype in high school. A lot of grade school students are doing it too. The electronic cigarette trend among high school students and younger is catching on fast. In our school, yeah. at least 50 percent. Over 50 percent, I'd say. At least. Teen use doubled from 2011 to 2012, and students say there's a certain appeal. A lot of kids are doing it now because it's a growing trend. They, they think it's just to be cool. The aesthetic allure is, you know, people love the idea of smoke. They love the idea of, you know, breathing out smoke looks cool. The electronic cigarette is a way for kids to blow smoke out of their mouths without feeling like they're crippling their lungs and killing themselves. Right? There are some things to be said for e-cigarettes. Many longtime smokers have used vaping to quit smoking. A lot of kids we spoke with said that they believe these battery-operated devices are healthier than their old tobacco counterparts. Doctors say that might be true, but there still is cost of concern with this product. It probably is somewhat safer than a regular cigarette because a cigarette right now has, you know, thousands of chemicals, uh, 70 of which, which we know cause cancer. We've only found a few so far in these cigarettes, but we haven't been able to adequately study them. But there's a rising number of kids not previously addicted to nicotine now using e-cigs. The reason as a parent and as a physician because the issue really with this is comes down to addiction. Addiction to any substance is never a good thing. The industry is also unregulated with no quality control required for the chemicals that are vaporized and then inhaled. At the present time the FDA does not have the authority to regulate e-cigarettes and some have characterized it frankly as the wild wild west. Anything in your your lungs other than air is usually bad. So we don't know what's in these liquids. The danger of those are unknown. Clinical studies and FDA regulations are both in the works for e-cigarettes. But meanwhile, some vendors do sell to minors and the peer pressure to vape is on. I would definitely say there's peer pressure because, you know, whenever whenever there's a new item, everybody always wants to get the one. Everyone always wants to fit in. It's a very popular thing among boys at prep. I see them all the time after school, sometimes even in the bathrooms. Kids do it in class, like when the teacher's not looking. And I would say just about any school has them, and there's going to be a high number of students using them. School administrations have started to take notice. It's a very kind of furtive device. You know, there's no smoke per se. There's there's no no true odor. There was just you know suspicion that it might you know be infiltrating students. Mercyhurst Prep added rules banning e-cigs on school grounds last month, and students view the crackdown as a good thing. The faculty basically needs to show us students that you need to do things more correctly and things that are more healthy for yourself. Legislation that would ban e-cig sales to minors is pending in Pennsylvania, though it could be a year before FDA regulations are in place for e-cigarettes. In Erie, I'm Dee Dee Sun reporting. Yes, another bit of marvellous journalism from across the pond. <laughs> um, and I'm just, again, reading chat as that was playing through. Yeah, I do wonder if they, uh, if they gave some of those uh, kids a pack of fags to do the uh, interview. <laughs> it's strange, isn't it? Because they're asking them how many of them are using e-cigs. Um, they're not asking how many of them are smoking lit tobacco or smoking marijuana 
or using other drugs that may be illegal. Um, let's, let's not forget here that e-cigarettes are still legal in America. They're still legal in this country. There's nothing illegal about them, um, but if they can stop them from using them, they will. Yeah. Um, so again, I say they need to look at what's going on around the world um, and get some get some good advice because some of these MDs that they're using just don't know what they're talking about, do they? But someone who does know what he's talk about talking about uh, is Greg Gutfeld, and I've been sitting on this bit of VT for a few weeks, as I mentioned earlier, and I've just got to show it. Uh, you may well have seen it before. If you haven't, watch it and watch it again, because every time I watch this, it makes me chuckle. Uh, and I really want to get this guy on a show over here. Um, let's see what we can do. But anyway, here is Greg Gutfeld, big up e -cigs. So what do Dick Durbin, Richard Blumenthal, Sherrod Brown, Ed Markey, Tom Harkin, Barbara Boxer, and Henry Waxman have in common? They're stupid. I'm sure you knew that, but now it's conclusive. They want to ban e-cigarettes at the Capitol, yet they feel that e-cigs are no different than regular smokes. Notice how I said feel and not think. Yet they admit they have no research to back this garbage up. They're concerned that others might be exposed to vapor, water vapor. Yep, people who accuse the right of being anti-science are terrified by a substance that's found in fog. <laughs> but I guess they should also ban nicotine gum, too, which, like e-cigs, are non-tobacco delivery systems that replace deadly smoking. These morons claim it's all about promoting health, but they're too dumb to see e-cigarettes are doing just that. I haven't had a real smoke in months thanks to e-cigs. Ban them and people will smoke the real thing. Maybe that's the point. Henry Waxman wants me dead. Of course, their cowardly and profoundly infantile defense will always be about perceived danger. That way, you don't have to come up with real facts. Hence, our new villain is secondhand water vapor. Mist. I guess it's time to rethink teapots and saunas. Better not steam your pantsuit, Miss Boxer. Think of the children. My advice, forget about secondhand smoke or secondhand vapor. Worry more about secondhand stupidity, which these clowns spread with glee. A giant survey of e-smokers found that they truly kick butt. The devices get heavy smokers to quit. Side effects were small, but health benefits were huge, in that you live. Still in New York City, e-cigs will be banned in bars, restaurants, and public spaces tonight as the FDA announces regulations to prevent marketing e-cigarettes to kids. Because that's exactly what the e evil e-cigarette companies were planning on doing all along. They want to ruin a $2 billion industry by going after your brats. This reveals Gutfeld's fifth maxim. When you have no argument, what do you have? Children. The pouty props employed as protective padding against ideas that cave in your knee-jerk orthodoxy. Sure, kids shouldn't get e-cigs, but they shouldn't drive either. It's up to the parents to hide the keys. But if you can't keep your kid from doing bad stuff, that's not my problem. Fact is, the millions of lives saved from e-cigs far outweigh the hypothetical panics created by dishonest politicians. As if on cue, when an industry arrives for the making, the government arrives for the taking. Bozos. You know what's best for kids? Getting their parents off smoking. You get them away from tar, they live longer. <coughs> if e-cigarettes were around 40 years ago, a few million kids would be enjoying their parents now. Even more, a lot of grandparents would be alive too. And there's nothing more important to kids than grandparents. After all, they're the ones who will go out and buy you your e-cigarettes. <laughs> if my mic wasn't hooked to this chair, I would give you a standing over. Oh, yeah, I would hug you. Oh, please. Well, um, no one's stopping you. My, that's true about my grandparents. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like incredible. This is a life-saving device. So they're banning these in... In bars, restaurants, and public places, it's steam, it's vapor, banned, banned showers and clouds, teapots. The <laughs> steam coming out of my ears would get me arrested in Times Square. Oh, geez. Don't throw that at me. Anyway, I have a question. Oh, Eric, regulations are necessary. What kind, what kind do you need? Boy, I, I think you hit it on the head. It's parent, parent, uh, parents need to do their job. Um, 433,000 people died the last, uh, yeah. at least somewhat associated with smoking, and there's no ill effects of an e-cigarette that we know so far are small. Th this is a no-brainer. The feds need to get out of the way. Why are they banning this? You're right. They should be promoting this. They should be talking to kids in high school saying, use this instead yeah. of this. This exactly. will work better. This if will save your life. All. If yeah. you're and they are, by the way, Dana. Yeah. They're all going to try it. Might as well have them try that instead of that.
Then they won't like it, though, maybe. Yeah. Bob, it's all based on feeling and perception. People know, people look at this and go, oh, it looks like it's smoking. It must be bad, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it sort of reminds me of banning uh, cigarette candy. Remember those things? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I love that. I don't, I don't understand what, what it is about, the, what is the evidence that this is somehow causing uh, damage to people? I, the only thing I can say is, think by reading this is, they think it's going to influence young people to smoke cigarettes. Yeah, like Joe Who are Camel. they kidding? Remember Joe Camel? Sure. They yeah. said that cartoon was going to cause kids to smoke. It was just an ugly dromedary. Yeah, I said it. Carried a lot of water. Yeah. What do you, uh, Andrea, shouldn't health experts be defending e-cigs, or do they have some kind of backing from, like, I don't know, pharmaceutical companies with their patches and their gum? I think there's probably a lot of money behind this, um, especially on the, on the political side. Um, they should be. Even just from a budgetary perspective, yeah. less people smoking means lower health care costs. Right. Now that we're shifting the health care costs more and more to the taxpayer because it's going over, under government-controlled health care, more taxpayers should be concerned with this. I'm convinced if e-smoke, uh, e-cigs were around, I'd, my father would still be alive. Yeah. So I'm with you on that. And another thing, if you have such an issue with e-cigarettes and kids and their lungs, well, then you know what? Take your signs and go to Colorado because yeah. no other place has done more to promote smoking and lungs yeah. than there, rather than these e-cigarettes that can actually help people and get them Who's off. Who's most threatened by this? Most tobacco. threatened by this tobacco industry, Big right? Tobacco's got to be well, curious. They're to buying a lot of these companies. I was thinking, though, maybe just the gum and the patches, too, the pharmaceutical companies. Well, but think about the biggest, so you use those to stop smoking. There's no doubt in my mind there's a huge tobacco lobby that's yeah. behind getting the FDA to, to, to make that look bad and, and increase the regs. You know what they should do? They should make the e-cig a kale delivery device. <laughs> there you go. Because then the government would probably say, oh, that could be good for you. Yeah, like make it, well, by the way, these, the, these devices are great for, like, tran put, yeah, it, put health stuff in put it. Put fish oil supplements yeah. in there. I figured out the other group. Yeah. The healthcare industry. Yeah. Because it puts them out of business. Yeah, there you go. Ah, good point. Sec you, there's no such thing as secondhand smoke with this. It's vapor. Don't you just love Greg Gutfeld? <laughs> uh, I love the way he goes into his rants uh, and talks sense. Uh, and both those bits of VT there uh, with Greg on um, both talking so much sense. A lot of people in chat there saying, uh, wow, it was on Fox. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, sometimes they do put some good information out there. Uh, and you know, the rest of the states need to look at some of Greg's stuff uh, and um, kind of have a little rethink about how they portray things, maybe. Yeah. Um, I'm just seeing what else is happening on in chat there. I think next week I'm going to bring chat in on the screen so you can see what's being said. Um, yes, as long as it's not naughty. Mm. Anyway, moving on. And hopefully, maybe we can get Greg on the show or on one of our shows at some point. Um, always very difficult getting, um, getting people from the States on um, with time differences and schedules, what have you. But I shall tweet him again and see what he says. Yeah, could well be an interesting, uh, an interesting chat, don't you think? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I showed you uh, the Evic Supreme uh, and the uh, software. I did a little update earlier on. Um, I have been putting together the last couple of weeks, the last three weeks of data. So uh, have a little look. It's a quite a quick one, this one. If you recall, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at the Evic Supreme uh, and also the software that you can download from Joytech, which can allow you to change your vapor settings uh, and the configuration, but also look at your vaping record. Uh, and what I've done is I've connected it to my PC and I've clicked Data Import. There's nothing to import now because I've already imported it. So if I click OK, and then we can click on vapor record and change the date to the start date was the 5th and today is the 20th so I can click on search and that then gives me a little graph which tells me how I've been using it and you can see there the 11th and 12th didn't use it so much and also the 14th 15th um, but uh, on the 6th 
used it pretty much all day. <laughs> 155 puffs. So you can see on a day by day basis how many puffs you've you've used. And on the days where I've had less, I've been using the uh, VTR as well. Um, you can then look at the time and it tells you the amount of time you've been using it and also by energy. So you can see how much energy you've used. Yeah. And of course, you can look at it um, by the week as well by the various different um, aspects by puff, by time and by energy. So you can see there that week 437 puffs, that week 251 and this week 128. Okay, that's just uh, today really. And then of course you've got time um, and then the energy. I've also been playing around with the real-time variable wattage um, feature and making these little curves um, so when it is set uh, and I've put this as a uh, home caramel 24 that's what that means so I've created a flavor uh, and it kind of starts off at uh, 6 and it builds up to 10 peaks at 10.5 and then goes down again over 7 seconds um, Still kind of messing around with that really to see um, if that's any good. Um, what I generally do is push the button uh, on 10 watts or 11 watts depending on what flavour it is and uh, what I've got on the top. Um, but what I do need to do is get uh, an atomizer that I can really push the wattage on um, to give it a good run for its money. But anyway, there you go. That's a little update on the, the My Vapor software. Yeah, back to the studio. Yeah, like I say there, you know, the whole puff counter thing and the customization might well not appeal to a lot of people. Um, and as I said at the end there, I usually have it set uh, on, um, it's at 10 watts at the moment, and that's how it is. Um, and you can, I can tell from that graph though, um, when I was actually working um, during the day because when I'm working at home I just puff away um, but when I'm working uh, at the places I have to go to um, can't use it so I have to go outside sometimes I just don't get chance um, so it's uh, used in the car there and on the way back and maybe once during the day um, but when I'm at home yes um, you know I have the VTR I have the EVIC uh, I've got the rest of them and I kind of just pick one up um, and uh, sit and chuff away as you do um, but yes interesting stuff but uh, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence at, at whether it's too much information or not um, it's just nice to play with now and again so to speak um, <laughs> no double entendre intended for chat there um, now then almost out of time so uh, I'm going to remind you what is coming up for the rest of the week uh, and tomorrow night it looks very similar to um, to this. Yes, tomorrow night it is Tin Your Tip with Mr. Dibley and Mr. Jones. Oh yes, hopefully all their fingers will be intact by the end of the hour. Who knows? Uh, don't forget, coming up now-ish um, on the other page is DE Talk for our German-speaking viewers. Um, so you can head across over to there. 
Uh, and uh, Thursday, it's VT Talk with Dave and Sav, plus guests. Sunday, of course, it's Dave's Tackle Box with Mr. Dave Kitson and more than likely Mr. Dave Dawn in attendance, um, which brings us back to next Monday for the Haze Hour and Tuesday for Vapor Scene. Don't forget also you can listen to RY4 Radio every night of the week at ry4radio.com. The link will be going in chat. I should be, um, I should be thinking, yes. Can get words out there? Yes, the link should be going into chat uh, at the end of the show. Uh, and uh, I will see you right here next Tuesday at 9 o'clock. Until then, my friends, have a good week. Thanks for watching. Tati bye. is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.